Did you know it's possible to get your Xbox set up as a powerful emulation device? Let's talk about that. Hello and welcome to Modern Broadcast. In today's episode, we're going to be turning our Xbox Series X into a powerful emulation device. Uh, this is done in retail mode. Back in the day, you used to have to turn your Xbox into developer mode in order to put on some third-party applications such as RetroArch. Uh, that is no longer the case. We can do this in retail mode completely free, 100%. Um, it's just that the apps will go down from time to time, so we do have to kind of keep an eye on it on when we can uh, get this installed. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first things first, uh, on our Xbox here, what we're going to want to do is open up the Microsoft uh, Edge browser. All right, and once we get that open, what we're going to want to do is sign into Discord because uh, we're actually going to be utilizing a Discord server. And uh, I'll have the link down in the description below where you can get there. So let's go ahead and sign into our Discord. I'm going to scan with the QR code here on the side. And once we're signed in, we're going to go to the Xbox Emulation Hub. Uh, so here is the uh, Retail App Status channel. And we see that there is a green check mark. So that means that the applications, the free applications, are up and running. Again, this gets taken down quite often. Uh, it's only up kind of every other weekend, it seems like. There's an orange marker and even a red marker. And you'll be able to quickly tell they always have a green check mark in the next to the channel name if they're up, a yellow um, caution, or a red symbol. So if we scroll down to Retail Announcements, and if we scroll up, here we have all the links of the most recent ones. Uh, again, since they are up and running, um, we can click any of these links and it will start to download those um, applications. But make sure, make sure, make sure that you run the apps immediately after downloading them. You have to run it at least once because if they're taken down before you run it, the apps will not work. However, if you run it at least once after downloading, they will continue to work afterwards. Um, again, you must use these uh, links on the Xbox console using the Microsoft Edge as they will not work if you use a PC and transfer it over. So um, I go ahead and click this first one here, and it'll start to download. So backtracking now, we'll scroll up, and we'll click the next one. And we'll quickly just do this for each one. Um, in the most recent announcement, they said that they purposely made the uh, names. As you see, it's just a bunch of letters here. Um, they did that on purpose. And that was to hopefully allow the applications to be up longer, I think. I'm not entirely sure. So I'm going to go ahead and download the rest of these um, that I'm going to be utilizing. And we'll be back here in a minute. All right, so here we are. Uh, so some of them are still downloading in the background, but we're going to go ahead and open up the Dolphin emulator. And uh, all I'm doing is I'm just opening up each of these uh, and then closing them down right away. There's nothing installed yet, uh, but we have to at least open them once in order for them to continue working after they get taken down from the store. So I'm um, just going to finish that out real quick. Okay, so to transfer files over to our Xbox, what we're going to want to do is open up the FTP app. So as we see here, um, I have it open. It's Durango FTP port 21. Hello, Anonymous. And we're gonna, just going to go down here to start and push OK. All right, so now that that is running, what we see here is we have our address of this device is 10.0.0.74. So then what we want to do is go to our Windows computer, and we want to download WinSCP. So let's go ahead and hit download. Okay. And now that we have WinSCP installed, what we're going to do is File Protocol, go to FTP, 
no encryption, the host name, which was 10.0.0.74, yours will be different, port number 21. Let's do anonymous login, maybe? Let's try that. So here we have our My Documents area on our PC, and over here we have the Xbox files. Okay, so I went ahead and plugged in my external hard drive that has all of my game files on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the U folder on the Xbox, go to Users, and I made a folder called Games. I'm going to open that up. And in here, I'm going to transfer a couple of games uh, from a couple of systems just so we can test out the emulators on the Xbox. Okay. Now that we got everything transferred over, you can stop that and go back. And let's go ahead and scroll down to Dreamcast here. So what we want to do is go up to the top here and click on Settings. And then we're going to scroll on down. And it looks like what we actually want to do is put stuff in the Q folder uh, instead of U. So let's go ahead and change this. We're going to go to Add. Go up. Oh, hang on. Wait, there we go. Up, Parent Directory. We'll keep doing that. Until we can select Users, Games, and then DC because that's the Dreamcast. And we have Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Going to go down to the bottom and select Current Directory. And we see here we have our Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Let's go ahead and see if it loads. And here we have it. I mean, this is working flawlessly. Let's go ahead and uh, enter arcade mode. All right, and here we go. So yeah, we just push the home button. Uh, when we're ready, we can exit out of here. Awesome. Let's go ahead and get RetroArch set up. So here we are in RetroArch. So uh, when you first boot up RetroArch, what you're going to want to do is go to the online updater. And you want to scroll down to update the uh, do, 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 assets. So update assets. And you could also update the other things such as like the controller profiles, uh, cheats, database, anything else that you may want. Um, but I at least want to at least do the assets. Um, and let's go ahead and test out Nintendo 64. Let's see, where is that at? It's me, Mario. And there we have it. What? 
Uh, so one thing that I recommend that you do uh, when getting this all set up uh, in RetroArch is uh, we don't have a way to access the menu. Um, so what we have to do is go down here, go to quit, let's reboot it, and I strongly recommend you go to settings, input, Go to hotkeys, and for menu toggle, we'll make it that, and it, hotkey enable, uh, the hotkey enable button will make select. So now we can get the menu by pushing select and start. Let's go back. Let's go to configuration file in the main menu, and save current configuration. We can also go down here to import content, scan directory, go to users, user and games, and scan this directory. As you see down at the bottom, it is finding all of our games for our Dreamcast, Game Boy Advance, GameCube, Nintendo 64, PSP, and Saturn. This just makes it a little bit easier, a little bit more organized as well uh, when trying to uh, select games. So for Game Boy Advance, we have Pokemon Fire Red, the GameCube, the two games, 64, Saturn, and PlayStation Portable. So it doesn't look like it actually picked up that uh, Dreamcast game. Uh, so one thing to note that on Game Boy Advance, I also have a ROM hack of Pokemon Liquid Crystal in that folder. And uh, by default, it does not find it. So uh, you would still have to go through the method of load content and navigate to go find it let's go ahead and hit run and let's use the gpsp hit run again and there we have it we're playing pokemon so hypothetically if we push select and start we now have the retro arch menu where we can Fast forward, close content, and do a whole bunch of other stuff. Let's go ahead and close out a RetroArch. And let's boot up uh, the PSP here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and set up to get uh, God of War going here. Uh, one thing to note is I completely cut out the GameCube portion. As for whatever reason, GameCube would not boot whatsoever it also would not um the games wouldn't show up on the list so i don't know if that's a folder thing uh but just to save time i decided to cut all of that out and uh i'll look into it maybe make a short on it later but here we have god of war and uh let's go ahead and boot this up so this is absolutely fluid it, it looks gorgeous on the screen here um, there's really no issue with the combat at all. What I really like is holding the right uh, trigger is like an automatic fast forward button. So uh, it's kind of nice that that's just kind of built in right away. I didn't have a PSP growing up and uh, I'm really excited that being able to play this on the console here, um, maybe I can explore some titles that I didn't really get a chance to play. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. It's been a few weeks since I initially recorded this video. However, the retail app status is a green check mark. So go ahead, go join the Xbox Emulation Hub Discord and get your applications all set. Have a great week, everyone, and take care.